Welcome back to another episode of NFL News on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today, talking about a couple different things, want to kick it off uh, with Zach Wilson. Um, Zach's plan tonight, I believe, right? Jacks, Jets? Yeah. So, that uh, is opportune time. I've talked about it before, but obviously with Mike White being injured and um, Zach White having to play, And start, there's been a renewed conversation about all of that. And so um, I just kind of want to uh, revisit it. So there's a lot of questions right now about is Mike White, or not Mike White, is uh, Zach Wilson playing for his career right now and everything like that. And again, some people talking about should the Jazz go after a QB. And I just find it so interesting because it's it's going to connect to another topic. But I talked about in that episode, the the owners, the owners really being the issue with the way things are going in the league as far as um, just completely being impatient and the complete mishandling of a lot of QBs, even the ones that you think are pretty good. I would say probably maybe outside of Mahomes. Um, even with them, I, I, I would say there's some mishandling on their development as well, too. And obviously, you're talking about supremely talented QBs that um, do have some good situations, and so they were able to elevate. But what do you think happens with guys that aren't supremely physically talented or they aren't mentally tough like some of those guys, or even worse, they're in terrible situations where they don't get to elevate their play. So if you got Joe Burrow and those people having their development mishandled a little bit, then how do you think it's going for these other QBs? And so we're pushing out QBs out of the league at a faster rate. And we're not seeing that return. We're just moving on to the next one. And so you got a guy in Zach Wilson who's in his second year when I'm pretty sure he didn't play a full uh, season last year. So you don't even have two full seasons of tape on him. And people are talking about, is he playing for his career? It, it, it It's obviously, to me personally, I don't see Zach Wilson in particular being done. I mean, he could have a horrible end of the stretch. I don't see him being done in the league. There, There's no way a number two pick who wants to play um, is not going to get another chance somewhere. Obviously, it doesn't mean he's just going to walk somewhere and start. And a lot is very, you know, uh, reasonable that probably won't be with the Jets. But there's no way that I see his career being done. Now, if I'm the Jets... There's no way I'm letting Zach Wilson walk anywhere. It just doesn't make any sense. I I just, I mean, you go from Peyton Manning leading the league in interceptions as a rookie, uh, which I think Andrew Luck did as well, but you could go through a number of examples of quarterbacks, if not players in general, with rough starts. You have to give these players time to develop. Again, these aren't robots. It's not like you put them out there and say, well, this robot isn't as well made as I thought. I shouldn't have paid this price for it. No, this is a person. They're going to grow. They're going to think differently. They're going to play differently, especially depending on what you put around them. So people are asking, like, what do you do with Zach Wilson? What do you do with Zach Wilson? And, And I think the answer is, you know, fairly obvious. The Jets right now aren't going to be in the top five picks. They're not going to be one of those teams uh, picking with the top quarterbacks because no matter where they are right now, they're going to get pushed to the top. That's just, and, unless they're bad. Now, from what I understand, these are legit prospects. This, this isn't last year. So if I, if I watch the film and they're pretty much on par with first round caliber, they're all going to get pushed up. And so it's not like the Jets are more than likely going to be stabbing at that. Um, but if it's me, this isn't a situation where I'm aggressively trying to trade up and get another rookie quarterback. This isn't a situation where, um, 
I, you know, I'm going to throw Mike White to the side or Zach Wilson to the side. I think this is a situation like most QBs where you need to let him sit and grow and learn. And so, however that looks, if you continue with Mike White or if you go out and try to upgrade with a veteran or if you're able even to get uh, one of these first round quarterbacks, I'm still having Mike White in there because what's the worst that could happen? You're not going to get the equal value if you try to trade them. It's just not going to happen. You let them walk, then you don't get anything. Why not have that value as a backup quarterback? And so the discussion about Zach Wilson just continues to show how incredibly off the NFL is with their patience in developing players. And again, when I say the NFL, I'm mostly talking about owners um, and possibly some GMs. But it, it, I don't know what people think. Again, and I'll watch them tonight. I haven't watched a lot of them live. But I, I don't know what people think uh, they're supposed to see. And so unless he is completely incompetent, and can't throw the ball more than five yards and keeps throwing the ball directly to the defender, I, I don't know that I feel, okay, this is somebody that is just done in the league. So that leads me to the next discussion, which I think is, um, I, when, I think is uh, what's the word I'm looking for, parallel to this discussion, and that's the coaches. So if you didn't see... Um, at one of the recent meetings, um, and I forgot who shared this. It was either Adam Schefter or Ian Rapport, you know, one of those guys. But uh, the NFL, the league, <laughs> had the their numbers people come in and share with the owners. I think the number was eight hundred million dollars that they were collectively paying to non-active coaches. So either coaches not on their roster. Or or I should say either coaches coaching on a different team or coaches that aren't coaching in the NFL, period. A collective eight hundred million. Now, that number to me isn't shocking. I think it's eye opening to some people and obviously it's something to share. But that to me isn't shocking because of the way they treat coaches and the way they just keep, you know, firing. I mean, you had coaches fired after a year. You have coaches fired after two years. And I would say, again, unless a coach is doing something that is completely detrimental to the team, there is no reason to fire coach midseason. Because now, look, I mean, obviously you got these people on contract, but you have something insane like the Colts with Jeff Saturday, where you fire coach, you you pay him Frank Wright. Then let's say you don't go forward with Jeff Saturday. Now you might be paying him something too. And it's just, you continue to get stuff like that. But also you got to remember when you do fire a head coach like Frank Wright, you're more than likely going to have a lot of his staff being cut and you still got to pay them. This isn't just, oh, we're paying head coaches $800 million. No, we're paying coaches, period. And so... You, when you make that move, it's not just that one person. It's a lot of the staff as well. And then you got all this scapegoating. The, uh, the uh, what's the name? Detroit Lions cut the D-back coach, excuse me. And when they were, you know, a bad passing defense and they said, oh, okay, we cut the D-back coach. Now, I don't know that situation. Um, it, it's very possible. Again, he was doing something detrimental to the team. He had to go. But to me, like a lot of times, it looks like scapegoating. And guess what? The Lions still a bad pass defense. So trying to blame him isn't exactly the move. And so you get a lot of that going on, too. And now you're still paying those coaches. And so the conversation is the same when we're talking about the impatience of the owners with QBs. And it goes to coaches, too. Now. Obviously, the owners maybe have some idea, but even if they track those numbers or not, 
which I'm sure the GM does, the NFL thought it was important enough to bring to their attention at this meeting. Because these people are rich, we know. We know there's a salary cap and everything, but as far as the extra stuff they have to pay for, they rich. Some of them cheaper than others, but they all rich. But the NFL brought this to their attention for a reason. I don't, I don't know what else message there is to be sent um, other than y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop being impatient. It, it's just it's crazy to me. Like like I said, um, what's his name? Why am I blanking? Urban Meyer with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is exactly what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about unless a coach and they didn't even fire him in the middle of the season, <laughs> but I'm like, unless a coach is doing something that is just detrimental to the team, that is just, you know, toxic, there's no reason to fire him. Urban Meyer is a perfect example. Not even the fact that they weren't winning, even if they were winning, that's not a guy that you want. I mean, it's just bad business at the end of the day. You're talking about potential free agents. You're talking about engagement with former players. You're talking about the community and everything. You're going to have a, a roster where everybody hates being there. That's just not good business. That's not conducive. So that's a situation where you got to go. But a lot of these other things, these situations are just overreactions and being impatient. And I talked again before in the last episode about the difference in how coaches and quarterbacks used to be uh, <laughs> treated. Yeah, I guess that's past tense. And so the difference in the way they used to go about that business and how we quickly shift in the social media age to the microwave you know, mentality where they want it done quick. And I think Robert Sala just uh, mentioned too, uh, what do you say, the instant coffee generation where everybody wants it to happen right now. And that's just not how it works. That's how it never worked. And for whatever reason, people look to the past, they see the path and they just decided, no, we're going to do something different. And even though there's only a few examples of it working, everybody clings on to that instead of all the other examples of it not working. Nobody's going to sit here and say, well, let's think about Daniel Jones and throwing him out there with a bad roster. Nobody's going to say, let's think about Zach Wilson and him not being ready to play. Nobody's going to think about Trey Lance and him not being ready to play or Jordan Love and him not being ready to play. And the other people, no, they're going to say Pat Mahomes did it and they're going to try to chase that. So I thought it was interesting because I already knew it was an issue, but I thought it was interesting that the NFL pointed it out to the owners that, hey, y'all are paying so much money to people who don't even work for you because y'all firing coaches too much. So we already know that's a problem, and I'm glad the NFL brought it up. And then lastly, I just wanted to say I gave a shout out to Daniel Jones, but I got to give a shout out to Jared Goff too. As I said, the media and the fans pick and choose who they want to hold up and who they want to put down. And I, what sparked this is, with the Bears, obviously, I'm tracking the the draft order pretty, you know, frequently. And I was looking because the Rams pick is going to the Lions. And so they're close to us. The Rams and uh, the Broncos are the two teams I'm watching. And so on the NFL article with the draft order, they have uh, the team needs. And they listed quarterback as a top need for the Lions. And I just had to sit back and really just shake my head. You're talking about a top five offense in a lot of different categories that's being quarterbacked by Jared Goff. Now, I get it. Like I said, the media and the fans make up the narratives. And unless something crazy happens, they're going to stick with it. Even with Matthew Stafford. The man, it took him winning a Super Bowl for people to be like, really like, okay, you know, maybe he could quarterback. And then right after when it looked bad of him getting the ring, they went right back to their narrative. And so it, it really, did, I wouldn't say it didn't matter what he did, but he would have had to do a lot to change that narrative. With Jared Goff, people wrote the book on him. 
they first of all they wrote the book on him before mcveigh they wrote the book on him i never forget jeff fisher and who was the coach when jared golf's a rookie jared golf played i think it was like seven games he didn't even play that much and everybody was calling him a bust when he was around one of the most dysfunctional teams but he also again didn't even play and then when he did play he played some really great defenses no one looked at any of that context they just called this man a bust then sean mcveigh came in they start winning now all of a sudden they you know they're saying it's Ty Gurley, but they're looking at Jared Goff different. He goes to a Super Bowl. Now, the Rams said, we want to upgrade. It's not working. They moved on. Okay, cool. And I'm not sitting here saying Jared Goff is an amazing quarterback. I, I would never say I was, you know, a defender of Jared Goff ever. It's just really looking at, you know, the writing on the wall. The man, again, uh when something goes wrong gonna get all the blame but the team is doing well offensively and i track these stats or whatever efficiency they're one of the most efficient they're top five in efficiency top five first downs passing first downs like their offense has been playing really well and jared golf is their quarterback and he is getting no respect for it he's getting no respect for it most of the time, people either don't talk about him at all. They talk about Dan Campbell. And if they do talk about him, it's negative. Like, it's the Lions, and they got Jared Goff, so it won't work. <clears throat> and I just, and then that that uh, article talking about the, the top need for the Lions as a QB is just is so disrespectful to me. It's crazy. Because, look. Like, if you want to say, which I don't necessarily agree, but if you want to say they got a roster full of studs on that unit and they can put in a nice young quarterback and get going, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that because a rookie quarterback, especially if you watch what they do, is, is not a high probability that they're going to be great at doing the things that golf does. It's not a high probability they're going to walk in knowing those nuances and being able to play that west coast offense especially these quarterbacks these days so um and i'm not saying they wouldn't be able to have success obviously switching things up a little bit um but still it, it's just it's it's just crazy i'm gonna say crazy it's interesting to me how some qbs people just give no pass to and yet you have some quarterbacks who are actually playing bad and they get all the excuses in the world. It's the Skip Bayless effect. I swear. I swear online it's the Skip Bayless. That's why I dislike that man so much as terms of his contribution to society. It is the Skip Bayless tactic. People just give it all the excuses in the world to the QBs they like. But if they wrote the book, they got this narrative on you. No matter what you do, they're going to go. And, and then they're going to go at you when you're doing well. Kirk Cousins is the same way. Kirk Cousins, <clears throat> when that offense doing well, whatever, they chopping Kirk Cousins down, even when they went in and doing well. Um, and I'm not talking about these last few games, but still. And, and, and Jared Goff, offense is humming, chopping that man down. You And I was saying this before, like people talking about Justin Jefferson, how he's so great. I was like, how's Justin Jefferson so great, but Kirk Cousins sucks? I don't think that happens. I, I really don't think that happens. I mean, yeah, you could point to D-Hop, Andre Johnson, for whatever reason happens with the Texans. They were able to put up numbers with bad QBs, but um, or at least QBs that weren't up to that caliber. But Kirk Cousins is none like those QBs. And again, it's disrespectful to put him in that category. So... Like I said, people pick and choose who they want to put up and who they want to put down. So anyway, that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And thank you for listening.